In our guides, we here at SkillCap try to teach you the fundamentals of arena PvP. From positioning to defensive cooldown rotation to setting up kills, all of which are very important concepts in order to climb rating. But time and time again, we see the same two complaints. First of all, you can't do anything without gear, as you don't deal damage and get one shot by everybody, so it's pointless to learn. And secondly, the only reason I'm dying or can't score a kill is due to my partner. So, it got us thinking, why don't we send one of our experts undercover into LFG with gear that you would expect for the average low rated arena player, and then remove even more gear and see if they can practice what they preach without their access to rank 1 partners and the best gear in the game. And unluckily for our content creator Zot, we picked him. Oh, and we almost forgot, he's gonna need a disguise. We figured, as he sounds so posh, let's put him in the most British looking attire that we could find. As always with these challenge videos, let's start by establishing the rules for today's challenge. First and foremost, Zot has to complete this challenge with a healer that he's found from LFG. What better companion to embark on this journey with than our 1550 CR Paladin searching for a fast and big DPS, something Zot wasn't quite sure if he qualified for. Luckily though, he made the cut. Second of all, Zot, in order to complete this challenge, must get his healer a rating gain of 200 or more. And last but not least, Zot must drop his 228 eye level mythic raiding gear in replacement for a mixture of low eye level conquest and honor gear, giving him an overall eye level of 200. Okay, so now we have the rules established, let's jump into the games. Zot was met with his first challenge instantly, not to do with anything inside the games though, but to do with his disguise. 400k, there is absolutely zero chance I'm paying that for that by the way. Trying to cut corners, he found a much cheaper option, the high society top hat. Unluckily, this one couldn't be transmogged, so now Zot's stuck doing this challenge with a white helmet and only 190 eye level, 10 eye levels lower than the challenge we set for him, but whose fault is that? Last, let's jump into our first game, in which Zot comes up against a warrior, Holy Paladin. Warriors are basically the worst thing he could ever meet as a Shadow Priest. A warrior spamming 15k condemns every global is not something that a 190 eye level Shadow Priest can easily go toe to toe with, especially when his teammate doesn't even use his crowd control onto the correct target. But what Zot lacks in gear, he makes up for with clever positioning. Let's see how he handles the situation. A ton of damage into this guy, and I'm gonna kite him out of line of sight. This is the big one. I'm taking a lot of damage, but if I kite him out of line of sight, he's gonna have to stop hitting me. So now he's just lining his pallet. Look, in order to hit me, he lines his pallet. So I'm just getting more and more pressure, more and more pressure. We get another rep because of this now. We get the bubble because of this, and we maybe even kill him. So what we saw there was Zot manipulating the enemy warrior's positioning in order to create pressure for himself, a key concept we teach in almost all our positioning courses. So although it's never nice to have a melee focusing you, remember you're always in the driving seat. You dictate their position. Where you stand or where you move to, they have to follow you if they want to deal damage. And if you use this to your advantage, you can make plays not only offensively like we saw Zot do here, but also as a way to reduce and relieve pressure which may leave you wondering, what do you do if you're in a situation like this if you're the melee player and a ranged caster is continuously dragging your line of sight? Something Zot was doing yet again to score a win in our second game versus yet another warrior holy paladin. Warriors sure do seem popular for some reason. Well, the answer is simple. You need to evaluate if you can afford to follow. So evaluate what defensive cooldowns you have, how much damage the enemy is capable of doing, and if you can win that trade. If you're chasing a rogue mage around the pillar and you're about to be off stun, DR is going to be the wrong choice as is continuously lining your healer until you drop low, and then have your enemy begin their crowd control chain. But situations like these often happen more regularly in lower rated games, down to the fact melee healer compositions very rarely position correctly. As the enemy healer in these scenarios, you need to accommodate your melee and consistently reposition, allowing them an easier time to keep up pressure. Nonetheless, Zot was able to secure a second win in a long fought out game, getting him and his paladin rolling on what seemed like an unstoppable win streak, at least for now. Yes, this is what you call foreshadowing. Whilst positioning was key in our first two games, game number three had Zot face up against Fire Mage Holy Priest, a composition revolving purely around combustion. Combustion is one of the strongest offensive cooldowns in the game. You either trade a defensive if you have one, or lose the game instantly. This can be one of the hardest things for any LFG or undergeared player to work around. Defensive cooldowns can very easily be overlapped. People panic, and if you're playing with unexperienced or unaware players, they're less likely to react to combustion at all. 
In Zot's game, his paladin made a very big mistake in trinketing a triple diminishing return polymorph, completely wasting one of his most important defensives in order to survive the enemy mage's combustion window, which is shortly on the horizon. While oblivious himself to this grave mistake and his more than likely inevitable demise to combustion shortly coming, Idelium, our LFG paladin, is in safe hands. Let's hear what Zot had to say on the matter. It's just one combustion now we need to survive. It's all I'm scared about. Chase this mage. It's gonna be next stun is gonna be combustion. Here it is. I'm pre-purging. Meteor is a sign of combustion. There we go. It's off instantly. So what we saw there was Zot using his game knowledge and awareness to completely counter the mage's offensive push. Compositions with strong offensive cooldowns like Ret Paladins or Fire Mages are always looking for potential swap targets. Just because yourself or your partner has been the main target for the majority of the game, it doesn't mean the enemy can't mix it up. If you waste your trinket or waste a defensive cooldown, you become the prime target. Recognizing this, Zot pre-cleaned the mage of all friendly buffs and made sure he avoided all crowd control. One of the ways the mage Holy Priest could still secure their setup. Then the second he saw the meteor, he spammed his purge on the already cleaned mage, instantly removing his combustion and thus his kill attempt. Meteor for fire mages is one of the many potential warning signs that you can use to predict that a burst class is about to pop their cooldowns. Game 4 had two very good examples of this, pitting Zot and his newly found LFG companion against Balanced Druid Retribution Paladin. So what we're looking out for here is Convoke. Convoke is going to be the most scary thing. So we're going to watch for Incarn and then Convoke. So here's Incarn. Okay, he's, I'm going to fit this guy as he's popped Seraphim. So they're obviously going me here. Trinket Wings, I'm going to instantly fade that. I faded the Divine Toll, faded the Final Reckoning. This guy has no trinket now, so I'm going to hit him with the mind games. The convoke. Now I instantly silence the convoke and we kill the guy. If you didn't pick up on that what happened, Zot noticed two very big warning sides this game, which players very commonly miss or don't pay attention to. The first, which he didn't fully explain, was that he instantly recognized the druid was playing Night Fae, so had Convoke the Spirits. How he knew this was by targeting the druid, as there was no Kindred Spirits buff, it's almost a guarantee that he's playing with Convoke. And then also in that clip, we heard Zot mention Seraphim. What does that have to do with anything? Well, one of the most integral parts of a Ret Paladin's burst is actually Seraphim. This will always be the first sign that they are about to burst. Seraphim is almost always followed up with a Divine Toll, Avenging Wrath, and then Final Reckoning into Templar's Verdict. Yes, watching for Avenging Wrath is still very important, but Avenging Wrath is not on the global cooldown. A Ret will always Avenging Wrath and combine it with Divine Toll at the same time. So, looking for these warning signs and knowing how enemies initiate their burst windows can give you a much higher chance at surviving regardless of gear or versatility levels. By the way, all of the live action games recorded for this challenge and hundreds of other commentaries can be found over at the best place to be if you truly want to improve an arena, skill capped. We also have a zero risk rating increase guarantee while actively using our service, or you can claim a full refund. Check us out right after this. Now, a common experience you can probably relate to whenever you queue up with an LFG healer is that it can be incredibly hard to coordinate crowd control in order to set up kills, which is something Zod experienced firsthand in our next game up against Demon Hunter Holy Paladin. Although some classes have an easier time at this, Shadow Priest isn't a spec where you can just run over your enemies with consistent pressure. We're looking at you, warrior mains. So making these crowd control chains potent is how Zod is looking to win most of his games despite his obvious gear disadvantage. So for his game plan, he's going to want to build some pressure, land crowd control, pop his burst damage, and then extend that crowd control. One of the best ways at enabling your healer to assist you is to consistently present them with situations where they can feel safe to secure crowd control. So if you're not in danger yourself and you have pressure, it's likely that your healer is more inclined to play aggressive. Something Zod was hoping for in this game, where he was continuing mind controlling the demon hunter low in the hopes his paladin would push in for a repentance, something he was actually doing in the previous games. Let's listen in. We have a lot of damage here. I'm going to MC him with my dots up while he's got no kick on the hill. Hopefully my paladin uses this time to try and get a rep. Try and get a rep. Maybe he gets one, maybe not. We MC the big heal again. Okay, so I'm going to drag him away from where the pal is standing. Oh, I need to silence this. I got it. Nice. I'm going to stun him on this so he goes for the rep. He can't rep because he concentrated on the engine. Yeah. Now, I I need... Oh, fade this. Oh, okay. That's what I was looking for. 
For whatever reason though, our paladin friend decided to throw a curveball and not spec repentance for this game. And despite his best efforts and the demon hunter surviving on 10% numerous times, Zot just couldn't finish the job, lacking the extra crowd control to secure a kill, and thus eventually losing the game. Speaking wonders for the importance of extending crowd control chains. Figuring out where it went wrong and what they could improve on ready for next game, Zot asked his paladin to spec into rep so they could go for these crowd control chains. After explaining that he's in fact a healing man, Adelium comes around to the idea and they queue up for their next game. Unbeknownst to Zot, this is where it all goes wrong. While me and you may know what rep is short for, our LFG paladin didn't, so Zot gets a nice little surprise when he enters his next game. You are, you, you're in rat gear. Rat gear, change gear. <laughs> okay, so my paladin is currently wearing rat gear. Now, you are in rat, uh, okay, the game has started and my paladin is in rat gear. Now, this is not great. I, I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, okay. This unforeseen, heartbreaking loss was too much for Eddie Liam to handle, who decided to call it a day and head out, content with his 80 rating earned. In order to complete the challenge, Zot will have to jump back into LFG. Obviously, no issue for a multi-rank one Shadow Priest. So, this guy, Holy Priest, 1690. Okay, he hit me with the low no decline. <laughs> There isn't any setback you can't overcome though, and Zot sucks it up and finds a new paladin, gets him to go repentance, not to be confused with retribution, and lays out the game plan. Our first game is up against Beastmaster, Hunter, Holy Paladin. We've got the game plan set and we're ready to rock and roll. Charging in on their mounts, Ariona and Zot instantly get the crowd control chain rolling with Zot's new pickup following instructions and going straight for the HOJ repentance, during which Zot locks down the Hunter to stop any kicks, pops all his damage, and scores a very early kill. Who knew, right? Damage plus crowd control is the key to victory. This is a concept Ariona quickly picked up with our second game starting off strongly against Windwalker Holy Priest. This is a game where we'll see all concepts we've spoken about in this video put into action very clearly. Zot's Paladin instantly trinkets the first thing that hits him. While maybe not recommended, we can respect sticking to a plan and he goes for the Hoge into Repentance. So now we have the crowd control, we're looking to Zot to follow up his crowd control and also pop his cooldowns onto the monk. So I'm just going to fade this mind games instantly. I'm going to stun this monk. My paladin's going for the rep here. He pops the karma. Crazy. I'm going to silence out of this. Then we're going to fear out of that. Then we're going to kill. Then we're going to MC him low. So in that one single setup, Zot and his paladin managed to force double gladiators medallion, fortifying brew, guardian angel, diffuse, and also touch of karma. How? Well, the simple combination of damage plus chained crowd control, however little damage you deal due to your gear, you can still create pressure using concepts like positioning and crowd control chains. Next, we see Zot apply another concept, proactively using his defensives in order to survive large amounts of incoming damage. We spoke about this earlier, almost everything is telegraphed, and if you know what to look out for, you can very easily judge the amount of damage you're about to take. There really isn't any excuse to getting caught off guard and being one shot if you're paying attention. Like here, Zot's sitting pretty at around 9 90% health. No reason to use defensive, right? Wrong. The monk has Schwen, which deals the most damage imaginable. On top of that, he also has his weapons of the order, a two minute cooldown, which increases his mastery and overall damage further. And to top it all off, the priest is casting a mind games, and we all know how much damage that does. In order to close out this game, Zot and his teammate are going to have to first survive this onslaught of cooldowns, in which Zot does by building distance and kiting, buying him time until he can do their next offensive setup. This time though, Zot makes the mistake in assuming his teammate will follow up from his crowd control. Expecting this from your teammates, if you're not on voice and playing LFG is a recipe for disaster, as after a silence into stun, his paladin doesn't recognize he should chain the crowd control with a hammer of justice into a repentance, noticing late and giving the priest ample time to heal through Zot's attempt at creating pressure. Now with no crowd control left and Zot without a single defensive to his name, he's going to have to figure out how to survive. Let's see what he's thinking. But I'm going to kite him away here. This is on you, Trinket, from him. But he can't hit me now because he's in danger, right? Look at him. He had to choose there. Either chase me, fall behind, or just retreat and go for hills. So I relieved my own pressure there by my positioning. 
So positioning isn't only important in creating pressure, but also at relieving it. Zot now after surviving instantly notices another offensive cooldown popped by the monk, this time in the form of Serenity, and as a response, instantly trades his dispersion without hesitation. Again, remember, look out for offensive cooldowns. In this dispersion, Zot had 8k health. Rising Sun Kick can easily hit for anywhere up to 18k during Serenity. Proactive cooldown usage is how you prevent these random one-shots. Always respect your enemy's cooldowns. At this point though, it's looking pretty bad. There's no defensive cooldowns left from Zot, and he notices his paladin is about to get mind controlled while the monk still has his serenity up. It's unlikely his paladin will have the same mindset of Zot and understand just how scary a monk with serenity active truly is. So despite being on 50% health, there is a very high chance Zot can instantly get globaled here. With no defensives left, how would you defuse this situation knowing the monk's next global could potentially mean the end for you. Let's see what Zot thinks. I have to stand in silence. I have to do this here because I have to survive. So I'm just kiting him away here. Big mind games. Death. Ah! Oh! Sorry, I just screamed. I just said a nerdgasm. Okay, I think we can all safely pretend we didn't hear that scream. Anyway, watching that back, against all odds here, Zot actually turned the situation around completely and did so by utilizing his offensive crowd control to gain counter pressure. While it wasn't the cleanest setup, it was necessary in order for him to survive. While a stun silence is obviously specific to Shadow Priest, he's utilizing a fundamental concept all rank 1 players use when under pressure, which is not only to use their crowd control to peel, but also its value by simultaneously going offensive. A lesser player in the same situation may panic here and use this crowd control strictly to run away and survive, which would in turn put them so far behind they have zero chance of winning. Continuing to utilize all of these concepts combined, Zot and his paladin tear through the competition time and time again, securing kill after kill with their deadly crowd control chains. Big damage there. We got the karma. If we have another pop. Oh, please. Oh my god. I can't believe it proactively using defensives, dragging players to poor positions, creating pressure, and then executing crowd control chains combined with damage when the enemy healer opens themselves up. There was definitely still some bumps on the road though, mainly Warrior Druid. The high damage combined with inability to access Repentance left Zot 1v2 against a Warrior doing twice his damage, even if it was close at times. Please, please, please. Silence him up. Into full fit. Oh my god, please. I got the reflect. No, man. Ah, oh, we got double trinket. It's fine. Double trinket is good. Double trinket is good. But Zot never lost hope, and despite his huge disadvantage in not only matchup, gear, and partners, this is it, guys. This is the game. I finally beat a warrior. Jesus. Calm down, Swifty. He. Yeah. Why don't die here? Ah! Oh! Granted, it was only warriors Zot struggled with, so I'm sure we can cut him some slack. All of this though sadly brings us to the end of Zot's LFG journey. 10 rating away from 1650 for his second paladin, Zot figured that would be a good one to end on if they win, getting his two teammates a collective of over 250 rating, completing his challenge. One thing stands in the way though, Retribution Paladin Disciplined Priest. Positioning instantly max range away from the rep, I mean ret paladin, and running away as soon as he looks to target Zot, he runs the other way to build distance in order to initiate a setup. As we know from earlier, the game plan is to get crowd control started by his paladin, pop damage, and then chain that crowd control. As Soon as his paladin mounts up and begins to run the priest, Zot knows it's time, running the retribution paladin so his teammate can secure the hammer of justice into repent. We know what to do next, right? Let's listen in one last time. This is gonna be an insta bubble. There's no doubt in my mind. It's gonna be an insta MD. It's gonna be an instant silence, instant death, and we win the game. And with that victory spells the end of this challenge. Zot successfully managed to infiltrate LFG and helped two healers gain a collective 250 rating, all whilst looking incredibly dashing in his 190 eye level top and tails. Alright guys, now it's time for our question of the day. What challenge do you want to see Zot do next? We were thinking maybe restricting his ability to use either defensive cooldowns or crowd control and see how far he can climb in high rated games. But we're open to anything, so get creative in the comments below and we'll try to attempt the one with the most upvotes. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see our content team partake in more challenges, make sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.